Saturday. <clears throat> and you guys that watch the channel know what's going down. And it is going down. And it's going down right here on Disciples Corner. All right, so just a little recap of what we did yesterday. Um, I actually fabricated my first patch. All right, this was a three-piece patch, okay? So what I did was I welded a piece on the inner fender because that was rusted out, and that weld runs along that outside edge right there, okay? You can still see some of the welds kind of started to come through when I was sanding, okay? And then I duraglassed it um, just to make it watertight. I plugged the hole down the bottom. That was the culprit for the uh, rust in the first place. Then I made and tacked the outside skin on and welded that along this outside edge here, across the bottom, and across the top. I got a little thin right here, so we do have a few holes that I might be addressing here today with the welder. If not, um, we're just going to dura glass over those. And then I proceeded to make the inside lip and welded that along this outside corner here, obviously. So that was my first patch, um, fabricated patch anyway. Next on this side, I didn't really um, have a whole lot planned for this area because, because I thought there was mostly surface rust under here. But I got way up underneath and realized that it was completely rusted out. So I went ahead and cut that area out and fabricated the patch for this. It's going to look something more like that. If you watched the previous video, you already know what's going on. I'm just doing a quick recap for you. So that's what we got to do today. We have to weld that in. Small patch of dirt glass there. And then I have all this surface rust that I took care of uh, with the grinder last night. Um, I actually used a 30 grit um, abrasive disc, the red ones, and uh, got that all down. I hit it with the rust jelly and dissolved whatever rust I could out of there. And now I'm going to go ahead and um, hit those spot, uh, wash those spots really good just to make sure that um, that rust inhibitor um, gets off of there. Okay. Then what I'm going to go ahead and do is put a really, really thin um, skin coat of uh, Duraglass on there. All right, so goals for today are as follows. I need to get three rust repair patches taken care of. One of them, two of them still need to be welded on. One of them still needs to be fabricated. So I have to fabricate that one, which is easy for me anyway. I did the last one, so it's the same exact patch. Um, I have to make and weld that one in, okay? I have to weld in the back one on the back uh, underneath that, over by that wheel well that I fabricated last night. And that'll be it as far as taking care of the patches and everything. Um, then what I'm going to go ahead and do is grind them all down at the same time. Just go around and ground all the welds down. Uh, if there's any mess ups or screw ups or anything, I can address them with the welder all at the same time. Okay. Then with those patches taken care of and um, the welds all ground down, um, they'll be ready for the first coat of Duraglass. Do is make sure that all the other rust areas are ready and prepared for a first coat of Duraglass. So that includes um, washing and uh, hitting the other rust spots up with uh, the wire wheel to make sure that those are all um, rust free and ready for Duraglass. Um, maybe even doing a little more wire wheeling on these, uh, on these surface rust patches across the bottom of the doors um, just to make sure there's no rust in them. I don't have a, I don't have a sand blaster and I don't even have a spot blaster. Um, so if any of you guys have ever used the Harvard Freight Spot Blaster um, that looks similar to the one that's used on Pisser's channel, um, let me know if that's, a, if that's a decent spot blaster. The one that um, Sean uses on Pisser's channel um, looks great, looks freaking awesome. Okay, and he just did a video um, this week of using it, and um, it looked like an awesome tool to have. I know he has both of them, and I don't know if he's used, I've never seen him use the newer style one yet from Harvard Freight, but um, I'm sure it's not the same quality as the old one that he uses, um, because the old one that he uses is the original maker of that spot blaster. I'm going to go ahead and take care of all this crap 
and uh, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get that first coat of Duraglass on everything at the same time. So I mean, I got like spot rust up here to take care of. I gotta feather out. Um, I gotta feather this out. This chip right there is chipped there, and it's all rusted inside of it. And up even to here. I need to feather this one out, okay? Like I said, I want the paint on this truck to be perfect. So what I'm going to be doing, just to recap so you guys know, is tomorrow I have to have this truck ready to be painted from that body line there down. So about six inches up across the whole bottom of the truck is going to get painted. And um, this fender here is going to get painted and blended and blended into the door and painted all the way up to this line here. There's a break in the hood right there, you can see. So I'm going to paint up to that break and the hood line right there and come down all the way to the grill and then come down and uh, I might not paint, or yeah, I'll be painting this whole fender. The whole fender is getting paint on it up there, maybe, maybe not, we'll see. And then I'm going to blend this panel into this panel, probably about a good foot or so, foot and a half, and take care of this dent while I'm at it. Okay? So that's the uh, plans for this side. And then that side will be completely done, minus cut and buff. On this side, however, we got a little more work to where we actually um, clear coating the whole side of the truck. Okay? Door needs to be painted. Bottom six inches, again, need to be painted from that shadow line right there at my fingertip. Okay, so the bottom six inches all the way across the bottom. Um, the door, and then the door blended halfway into the fender. And then the door blended, blended halfway into the back door. As well as some spot, some surface rust fixed here. Okay, and some surface rust fixed there. I already got the first coat of Duraglass on these, so those shouldn't be much of a problem. I'm just letting you know as far as paint goes, I'll be blending this in. So probably all the way down to here. Okay, and then up even around here. So I might even just go ahead and color the whole back half of this bed okay and the only thing I'm not really doing on this side as far as paint color goes is this s section right here and halfway across the door and a half of the panel in the front so still debating whether or not to just paint the whole side anyway I just don't know if I have enough paint and I'm definitely not going to want to go spend any more money on paints and then I'll be clear coating the whole side so the whole side of the truck gets clear coated all the way across this panel and then it'll stop on that panel. I'm not going to blend it into any panels. So. so yeah, so that's that. When I go to blend here, this is my only question if anybody wants to help me out tonight when I get this up. When I go to blend this panel, especially like um, Darren, if you get to see this before I uh, paint tomorrow, or any of you guys. I mean, I know there's several people out there that know. I'm gonna blend the door halfway across the fender here, but should I, you know, blend up at the same time? Because if I start blending into the hood, then I gotta blend into the hood, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna have to clear coat everything there. If, and if, I, if, if I do that, I'm gonna end up having to blend clear coat, or I'm gonna have to clear coat the whole hood, okay? Then we're talking about doing this whole side, the whole hood, and the bottom half of the truck on the other side. I don't know if I have enough clear for that. I might have to go buy more clear, but if that's what I got to do, it's what I got to do. But I'd rather just get away with not touching the hood since there's nothing wrong with it. So I'm hoping that maybe this color just ends up being really good. And I can just take this plan, panel and blend to the end of this panel maybe just like up to here not so much this way just maybe blend the color just blend it right here and then end up clear coating the whole panel and leaving that 
and hopefully right there, that little five inches of seam right there, hopefully that color matches. That's what I'm hope, hoping for. I pray to God. You know, I, if it's a little bit off, it's a little bit off, okay? That's just what I'm going to have to do. Because I'm not, I don't want to paint that whole hood. It's a flipper. I definitely want to set a new standard for flipping vehicles. Good thing, you know. I want people to say, oh, well, it's been through that body shop over there. Wise, and they do a really good job of making their vehicles look good. All right, man. I got a lot of work to do. I better start getting to work and stop gabbing on the damn iPhone. We got metal on the truck again. Wanna see it? I'm gonna show you all about it right now. There it is. I didn't clean any of the slag off yet. That's why I started to fill in, but the wire speed was a little high yet. Somebody's learning how to work. All right, there it is all ground down. Got a few tiny holes and I got one hole up here in the corner here. So it's really hard to get in there. Tried the door open, the door closed, whatever, it wasn't working. And that's a butt weld too, so I actually taped it in there with painter's tape. Kind of hold it in place before, so I could get the couple of tacks in the top right there. I started in that corner. The thing that gets me stoked is that I can only get better from here. And where I'm at now is getting me by. Don't. What? Hi, welcome. Welcome to me trying to be awesome. Hey Mick, you remember our patch that we made? There she is. Too much light, there we go. And she's on. Yeah! That's what the hell I'm talking about right there. Freaking. I'm going nowhere. What is that thing? Ew, freaking mosquito. God damn it. Not even, it's one of those. That's what you get for flying around on the ground. Does that make any sense to you guys? If you had wings and you could fly, you would have to fly around close to the ground so you get stomped on. Well, that's another video. But yeah, this is gonna be ground out, and I gotta grind. I gotta grind a few more things. With, I'm gonna call it the grinder. Pister calls it the grinder, and I was always like, that's a sander. Because you're sanding with a sanding pad. This thing works awesome for freaking welding, gr uh, grinding welds. Works awesome, I had no idea. Look at this. And I've been using the crap out of this thing. Um, and it's still got plenty of grit left to it. 
and I'm still grinding welds with it. I ground down the welds on the cab or on the uh, fender on the other side, the bottom fender uh, patch that we made, and the square one that we made for the other side. And yeah. So yeah, I have like that kind of rust right there, that surface rust to grind off on a lot of places, you know, like uh, across the bottom and stuff, you know, that's just got really light surface rust on it. Um, but I'm thinking about, I don't know, like that one I need to do because it needs some, it might need filler put, even put on it, but I gotta do that hole down there too, so. And yeah. So it's grind weld time and get everything ready for the first coat of Duraglass. Alright. It's like... It's like a quarter to two a.m. So yeah, I'm going to keep grinding. It's Saturday, right? There's no, there's no uh, ordinance, I don't think. I don't know. Probably.